Sly, sly, sly. I ask why, why, why? I am a Stallone fan. People, people might not know at this point. I am a Sylvester Stallone fan. I mean, big enough fan I did a marathon on my YouTube channel where I reviewed pretty much every film the guy has starred in and been in. I even have a playlist of it on my channel. And a lot of his films I enjoy. Many of the Rocky films. I love all four Rambo films. I love Over the Top, Tango and Cash, Cliffhanger, Demolition Man. I like Daylight. I like I See You. I like Dick Carter. Nighthawks. I, mean, I even like Oscar. Cobra. I fucking love Cobra. I reviewed these films. But what the hell has the guy been doing for the past nine or so years? I don't understand. All the projects and movies in the past that he said no to or he passed on. Passed on him and Schwarzenegger could have worked together in the 90s. They could have done Face Off together. They could have... Uh, Hunter. That film could have been done a decade ago. Two decades ago. They say, oh, he's going to do it. I don't believe it. Until there's a trailer, I don't believe he'd ever do that film, sci-fi horror film, Hunter. Won't believe it. He was going to do a film with Jackie Chan called ex Baghdad, and then he backed out of that. Just these number of projects he said no to, but then he does this film, which is so beneath him, it is, you know, some people say it's like a movie, a shitty episode of a TV show. I can't even call it that because I have seen TV shows with more production value, more style, and more action than this movie. I could click on a random episode of CSI Miami, which I have those on DVD, and there's more style and action in those than in this flick. And this film is just, at the end of the day, boring, useless, and pointless. Even at an 80, 80 to 85 minute, with, really without the end credits, like 80 minutes long, you take the end credits out, I swear it's like an hour and 19, maybe an hour and 20. And it still feels long and it drags and it's boring. The plot, Matthew Modine, who I don't mind as an actor, I like him in Full Metal Jacket. Him and these two guys are trying to get away from this robbery. They go to this meeting in the middle of nowhere, there's a shitty shootout. There's nothing to run home about that if you've seen a directed video action film, you've seen shootouts done better than this. A couple people shooting back and forth, camera fucking shaking. His two buddies get killed. He runs to the woods, gets wounded in the head. And for some reason, the bad guy is like two feet away from him. And instead of pumping a few more bullets to finish the job, some guy goes, let's go. And again, he's like two feet away, and Matthew Modine's like on the ground. Instead of like, doo -doo 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 -doo, end of movie, no, he walks off. I have no idea why. The only thing he knows the guy's hurt is that he's on the ground, he has a little bit of blood on his head. I, I, I did, I don't know why. Maybe because some money is buried, but they don't really make that clear that that's why the guy left him alone just makes the bad guys look fucking stupid so Matthew Modine gets up he wanders around the woods he gets caught and for seven years he's in this asylum because he has no memory memory loss until one day this other patient gives him this pill Matthew Modine takes the pill gets drugged up that guy, the security guard working for the asylum, the hospital, however you want to call it, and the nurse, 
the three of them did Math Modine now, and the three of them were working together, trying to get Math Modine's memory back, so they gave him this little drug. And it has to be put right into the spine. And it's a drug that gives back his memory. And then they wander to like three fucking places to Matthew Modine's old house, to a place uh, he or like one of his buddies worked at, and then this warehouse in the middle of fucking nowhere. And there's no action in the middle. If you think this is a hatchet movie, you have that tiny like minute shootout at the beginning, and then Matthew Modine gets wounded, and then you have a worthless shootout at the end where I have seen TV shows have better, more intricate, more exciting, and more fun shootouts. And Sylvester Stallone, there is no reason why he should be in this film. You see, that hard up on cash, this is a guy that was getting paid $20 million a movie in the 90s. Is he really that broke? They need to do a thankless, worthless role like this. And he is just bored in this movie. And you know what? If you combine the total running time that he's in it, if it's 15 minutes, I would be surprised. Because he shows up once in the beginning, at the crime scene, in the woods, wanders around with this other cop, telling, get that guy to the hospital, Matthew Modine's character, have a nice trip. Then there's a moment where Sly, after Martha Modine has escaped, those three guys got him out, the two guys and the girl, Sly's in the office talking to this doctor, and the acting is piss poor. Like the woman in that scene with Stallone fucking sucks, the nurse, who's not a nurse, who's with the three that did Martha Modine out, she's fucking horrible. The only people that you can kind of give, I can't even call it praise, but are not so god-awful, is Matthew Modine and Stallone. And even then, those two aren't much to run home about either. Because Stallone, he's bored, he's just sleepwalking through his role, and Matthew Modine, most of his role consists of, I know this place, getting a headache and holding his head in his hands like this. Every, each time they go to a place, he holds his hands, and then the camera fucking shapes, and he did, did more memories back. And I'm not even going to praise Matthew Modine. It just, I, maybe it's the director. I don't know what else this director has done. Maybe it's the script. Maybe it's both. Maybe it's a shitty script and he got piss poor direction. But Matthew Modine, it, you know, most of it's just, oh, my head, I got a headache. That's what he does for most of the film. And then Stallone, other than those two brief scenes I mentioned, like two, maybe three scenes where he's in an office talking to people, either going, be careful out there, or talking with Christopher McDonald, Shooter McGavin from Happy Gilmore, and I'm like, oh, he's a bad guy, isn't he? Because usually Christopher McDonald's a bad guy. He was a bad guy in Happy Gilmore. He's a bad guy in this film called Terminal Velocity, which is an underrated film with Charlie Sheen. Fun film, much better than this. The only time I remember him as a good guy is like Best of the Best 3. I'm sure there's other examples. I can't think of them right now. But usually, if you have that guy in the movie, he's a bad guy. And then with the type of character, he is an FBI guy who is has a little bit of shifty nature with Stallone's character. Hmm. And then there's even a point where Stallone goes, hmm, there's another person. There's another figure. We don't know who it is. Oh, a mystery person that was involved with the crime seven years ago. Hmm. What's the surprise going to be? Oh, wow. It's Christopher McDonald. Shoot him again. He's a fucking bad guy.
Except as Stallone says, some officers stay sharp. And then Matthew Modine and these three people going from point A to B to C. Again, it's just Matthew Modine getting the same headaches. We live in the same shit we saw him being in the woods. Him running away from gunfire in the woods. I swear they show that again and again and again. And then that's it until you get to the third, the finale, like the last 15, 20 minutes. Where a cop who knows Stallone, he, I even, I forgot how the fuck he got there. Or why the fuck he was there. But he's in the same hair warehouse where the three characters that Matthew Modine are at. The cop has a gun on them. Then these two bad guys, I guess from seven years ago, they come in, shoot up, they kill the cop, which is funny because the cop has a bulletproof vest on, but I don't know if these guns are armor piercing or the cop just had the shittiest bulletproof vest in existence because they shot the cop and he was like, pew, pew, and he's dead. I'm like, wow, that's some worthless body armor. Was the body arm made out of paper mache? So they kill that cop, and then one of the three people that's with Matthew Modine, they die. So it's just the other guy, the girl who's not the nurse, and Matthew Modine. The three of them are standing around, more bad guys come, and then Stallone is on his way because the cop had called him earlier. He gets there. And then really Stallone just shoots like four bad guys, including Christopher McDonald. And they're just in this empty warehouse in the middle of nowhere. It looks cheap. It's filtered. Like it's almost trying to be a uh, white gray. Maybe that not that far, but almost as if it's not as colorful as real life. <laughs> Which I don't know why they do that with filters in these movies nowadays. What's wrong with color? Hell, this fucking webcam has more fucking color than the fucking movie. <laughs> and ooh, Christopher McDowell's a villain. Whoopee. Again, not a surprise. And I'm repeating myself, but Sly shoots like four people. And there's nothing to it. Shoots one guy, goes up the stairs, shoots another guy over the railway. Uh, there's a moment where he's running and guys shooting underneath him, and then Sly shoots that guy. And then Christopher McDonald shooting at Matthew Dean. Matthew Dean has his bag with metal in it, so it's used as an armor to block Christopher McDonald's bullets. Because I guess Christopher McDonald won't shoot him in the leg or head. Just shoot him in the leg. I mean, just shoot him in the fucking foot. And then Sly shoots, shoot him again. And Sly goes up to Matthew Modine and the guy and the girl and for some reason lets Matthew Modine go with the money. Going, you know, you served seven years with no memory. That's enough time. You guys go ahead. And I'm like, why? But he lets the three of them go with the money and he's standing there with the thumb up his ass and a grin on his face. By his cop car while the three go off into the distance and the movie ends. That's really the movie. Bat trace, more like backwash. More like bat that ass up. And it smothers your face. Backhand, like backhand slice agent. For letting them get into this bullshit. What the fuck is. Again, I really want to know what is Sly doing nowadays with a steep plan to with this movie, but yet you bat down that Jackie Chan film at Baghdad? Why? I want to know why. I don't trust Sly anymore. Why should I? The last film for me that I gave a fuck about with him in it was The First Expendables in 2010. It's not Bullet to My Ass. Or Steve Plan, well, it was Steve Plan too. It's that grudge match where Robert De Niro is farting and the guy's like, oh, that's piss, Sly. Oh, no, that's not really piss. No, that is piss that you're washing your hands of. Oh, it's not. No, don't hit the meat. We're just trying to buy meat. 
suck my meat. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what it is. I know he's old. But fuck, I mean, even Charles Bronson, when he was getting up there, was doing films like Death Wish 3, which is fun, or The Evil That Men Do, or Murphy's Law. Those were pretty good. At least Clint Eastwood was doing stuff like In the Line of Fire. <laughs> or went off the direct stuff. I don't know what he's doing, man. I mean, fun. Deal with Nicholas Winding Refn and do like a dark, gritty drama, crime drama thing. Just don't have the guy write it. Because Refn, good director, but not the best writer. Or deal with the guy who did Mandy with Nicholas Cage and do a really crazy, weird film like that that's outside of the norm or... Or something, man. Because this, this is... One of the most worthless films Stallone has ever been a part of. You know, a, a very good guy, Fabio, the Italian 751, great guy. Like he said in his video of this movie. If you've seen the trailer, you've seen everything that Stallone does in the film. Again, if it's more than 15 minutes, I would be shocked. It's... And the other actors are piss poor... The idea, it's just lame and nothing much happens. Like, this film would be hard to fit. It'd be fucking filler. What I'm trying to say. If you had a, if this was a 25 minute program, 30 minute show on TV, got commercials, so you fit in 20, 25 minutes, it would still barely fit that time slot but this is an hour and 20 some minute movie like the huge ch the huge set you in the middle again is just he gets out go to three places oh oh i got headaches and then here's a warehouse there's nothing else there nothing any positives the musical score, maybe if it was in a different movie, maybe. But it seems a score, the score seems a bit more epic than this movie is or deserves. So I think if the musical score was in a better film, it'd be nice to listen to. But Math doesn't, like, not in this movie. And then, you know, what, he's going to be doing Estate Plan 3, and then Ramble 5. Why should I look forward to Ramble 5 when I've seen films like this and Estate Plan 2, Grudge Match? Why should I look forward to it? And I'm a bit, I got a fucking Ramble hat. Why should I look forward to it, man? After this, pathetic. Pathetic. And I did Sly... Looks like he doesn't want to fucking be there. Wooden and tired and bored. Just like I am while watching the fucking film. So fuck this fucking flick. The only reason I fucking saw it is because I'm a Sylvester Stallone fan. I reviewed pretty much all of his other movies. This is a new one he was in. And I wasted my fucking time. And that's what I did for being a Stallone fan. I'm still a fan of the guy, but damn, almost 10 years now of bullshit. I don't get it. I do not. But, thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.